Hey, this is Jay Tony. Welcome to San Francisco Under Your Nose. <laughs> Today I'm here to talk to you about one of the coolest monuments around. Right behind me is Lada's Fountain. It's a place that lots of people pass by, but most folks don't know its story. Lada's Fountain was a gift to the city by Lada Crabtree, a very famous San Francisco uh, starting actress and comedian and singer and dancer. Lada got her start here in San Francisco. Uh, originally dancing for minors when she was about six years old and later went on to a huge success both here and in uh, other big cities like New York and Boston and of course abroad as well. Lotta always loved San Francisco and loved the fact that she got her start here and when she uh, started making money one of the things she did was she donated this fountain Originally a drinking fountain, as you can see right here, um, this is where the water would normally come out and people would get the water there to drink uh, for the people of San Francisco. But the story doesn't end there. 1906, as almost everybody knows, San Francisco had a huge, huge earthquake which devastated the city. And Lotus Fountain, because of its central place here on Market Street, Geary Street and Kearney Street, it became a natural place for people to meet and congregate when they'd missed each other during the, uh, uh, the events of that uh, fateful morning in 1906. After the city rebuilt itself for a few years and things were kind of getting back to normal here in the city, Another very, very famous woman who was also a singer and actress named Louisa Tetrazzini made her voice heard here. Uh, she was an opera star. And by opera star, I mean she was big. She, everybody loved her, everyone wanted to see her. And pretty soon she got called away from her start here in San Francisco out to New York City where she also made a bid. You can find her, uh, uh, a couple of recordings of her on the, uh, the net on YouTube, and I highly recommend you listen to them because you'll be able to tell how exceptional her voice was. Um, she was also known as a very big eater when she was working here in San Francisco. Uh, this restaurant, across, or restaurant, this hotel across the street, the Palace Hotel, famous for a number of reasons, but one of the reasons it's famous for um, is that uh, their restaurant wanted to get not only Luisa Tetrazzini but other people to come and uh, eat there. And so they created a very special dish called, you got it, chicken Tetrazzini for her. And she went there to eat it, loved it, and all the people in San Francisco went to eat it as well. A lot of the other restaurants here uh, started making it as well and started claiming it as their own so there's some contention about whether or not the palace hotel actually created it or another restaurant created it or whatever uh but the uh, reports that i've read said that the palace made it so um that's what's here What's the connection between uh, Louisa Tetrazzini and Lotus Fountain, you may ask? Well, here you can see a bust of her up there. I don't know if on this video you can read it, but it says that this is to remember Christmas Eve 1910 when Louisa Tetrazzini sang to the people of San Francisco on this spot. And there you can see 
you lose this picture, it'll be better there. So, in 1910, Luisa Tetrazzini was having a little bit of a trouble uh, with her lawyers in New York City. Um, basically, because of conflicting contracts, the lawyers told her, look, you can't sing in New York City. We're sorry, you can't sing here. And Louisa was very frustrated. Yeah, they're going to say why. She was trying to figure out why, what to do about it, trying to figure out where to sing, where to keep her voice being heard. And she figured out that perhaps if she came here to San Francisco, she could sing. Well, there may have still been some legal issues about her singing in the theaters here. I don't know if she actually ended up singing in the theaters here, but she said a very famous quote that... Um, she said, I will sing in San Francisco because I know that at least in San Francisco the streets are free. So she decided to have a concert right here, pretty much where I'm standing, uh, here in San Francisco on this corner next to Lotus Fountain. They erected a uh, stand for her to stand on so that she could be seen and heard above the crowd on Christmas Eve in 1910. And here's the amazing part. I'm going to rotate the camera around here. First of all, there's Lotus Fountain, right there. And right about here on this area, of course this raised platform and stuff wasn't here then. It was a little bit different structure, but uh, there was an area here in which they raised the platform. And as I rotate around, I want you to imagine about how many people lived in San Francisco in 1910. It's only six years after the earthquake, five years after the earthquake, four years after the earthquake. My math is a little fuzzy. And uh, four years after the earthquake, how many hundreds of thousands of people would live in this city? Well, I've looked it up, and uh, it's not that many. Right now, in San Francisco, it's not even a million people live here full time. Um, any day, there's probably uh, a, you know, a couple of million people who come in to work from other places to work here, but the actual living statistics are under a million, last I read. The night, the night of Christmas Eve, 1910, rough estimates are about 200,000 people were around these parts right here in the streets of San Francisco for free, bunching up against the platform, bunching up against Lotus Fountain on Market Street, on Geary Street, on Kearney Street, all around us. 200,000 people on Christmas Eve came to hear Luisa Tetrasini sing next to Lotus Fountain. And that's basically the story of Lotus Fountain. Um, the uh, fountain is continuing to be the place where folks meet during the anniversary of the, uh, the earthquake in 1906. Um, on April 18th at about 5 in the morning, um, folks gather here and any remaining survivors who are able to make it. Um, their numbers are dwindling at this point. Uh, I don't know that any more survivors made it last year. And I don't know if any more survivors will make it this year. Um, but uh, if there are any survivors, they come here and uh, commemorate this as kind of a hollowed ground to the uh, earthquake. Um, but, uh, and, and recently, back in 1999, the uh, 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 place had been sort of neglected for quite some time, and they came in and uh, did a great refurbishment on it. Uh, the details here are beautiful. This gold paint, this brown gold paint they use on it is just really lovely, and um, they are keeping it clean. They're keeping it neat. They're touching it up. The only sad part is there's no water, and people throw things in once in a while, but they do keep it pretty clean otherwise. Um, but there's no water. Um, uh, for folks to use. So that's the story of Lotus Fountain. Uh, this is Jay Tony, and I thank you for joining me for San Francisco Under Your Nose. Uh,